here from So Sarah Style. I hope everybody's well. Um, today I thought I would do a bit of a review and um, have a go at sewing the um, the new Tilly and the Buttons Sunny Jacket. Um, as I've said before, I, I'm not really a frilly person. I've never made the Bakerloo blouse, although I'm now tempted. Um, but when I was at the Knitting and Stitching show at Alexander Palace, it was um, the release of the Sunny pattern and the actual frilly um, necked um, denim jacket was at the back of the display. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, oh, I really, really love that. It's just quite minimalist, but it's got that bit of frill. Um, and it was made up in denim, which I think probably helped um, sort of attract me to it. So um, from that moment on, I had visions of making a denim one. Um, I'm not actually gonna make a denim one today. I've got a different fabric for it but um, I'm going to give it a go and um, and show you the, and show you the results. So the idea is to make it in this. Um, oh, before I go any further, although I've shown it you now, um, this here actually is obviously a twirl. It's a calico twirl of it, which is why this bit's hanging off and it looks, you know, it's unfinished. Um, I've made it in a size four and um, I want to line it, which I'll show you my lining fabric in a minute. Um, relatively straightforward to make. Obviously, the trickiest bit is the frill around around here. But I have um, a little tip that I can share with you that I found incredibly useful on making the frill. Um, and I'll, I'll come to that a little bit later on in the video. So um, all in all, I'm really pleased with with the shape of it, with the length. This is the length as it is. This is obviously the crop length. Um, it comes in two lengths, which are the um, I'll just show you a picture and I'll put one up because obviously this is this is back to front. Um, it comes in with the hip length with the classic collar and pockets. So that's that view there. And also a cropped length with a what they call a prairie collar. This is the cropped length with the prairie collar. And obviously you can mix and match. So you could make the hip length with the prairie collar or you could make the shorter one with the pockets. Um, I may at one point, if I do another one, put some pockets on it, but I didn't want the pockets to be fighting with the collar. I just thought for, for my first one, we'll just keep it nice and simple and um, and, and see where we go. So, um, yes, as I was saying, gave you a little sneak preview of the fabric. It is this sepia, um, it's called sepia uh, cotton, soft cotton drill from Rainbow Fabrics. Um, I'm hoping there might be some left if you want some, but it was it was in their half price sale. It's relatively lightweight, which um, when I first wanted to make to, um, to make this, I had some denim fabric, but it was a, it was quite thick, and I didn't think that the denim would work particularly well with with the frill. It does say if your fabric's a little bit thick, you might need to use a separate um, fabric for the for the frill. But I wanted to keep it all the same. So this isn't. Yeah, it's, it's obviously thicker than a normal cotton, but it's lighter than um, a canvas or a drill. So I think that should work. It should work relatively well. It's a similar weight to the calico, which which I've made this in. And then I want to you've got there's an option. You can either finish it nicely with bias binding on the inside or you can line it. So I, my plan is to make a nice, cozy, comfy winter jacket and line it in some of this sherpa um it's more like a, a fur than a fleece really um line it in um some of this so um just to keep it as i say just to keep it nice and cozy so this was from pan fabrics and it's called i think they're leopard sherpa um once i've done that then the buttons it's all coming together beautifully and the hole on the leopard front again um excuse me are these which i picked up from their knitting and stitching show again from italian buttons which i think will go quite nicely so we've kind of leopard inside and leopard buttons so that's that is the plan for the sunny and as i have done before my um hope i'm hoping to get back to you later in this vlog with hopefully the finished jacket and um some reviews i had on on making it with as i say the the tip on on how to do the frill um and um hopefully that will all have come together nicely so i will see you a, a little bit later in the vlog for that in the meantime um i've forgotten to tell you what i'm wearing it is the um again tilly and the buttons pearl cardigan in a sort of a stretch 
uh, knit so it's like a lightweight sweater knit I made this absolutely ages ago it's the balloon sleeve version and I really love it it's so useful for throwing on with jeans as I have today and also putting over dresses so it kind of it helps extend the, the the life of your summer dresses if you've got a nice layering piece like this again I made the size four I'm just having a look now at the pattern here um it's a wrap cardigan with three sleeve options so i think the the idea is that you can make it with a shorter sleeve you can also make it with a plain sleeve which i have done as well i'll put a picture in and um you can make it with the balloon sleeve version i definitely for the my for my first version i didn't sh i didn't lengthen it i'd read it was quite short but i made it as is um and it, although it's fine, it does tend to ride up a little bit. So I just added, uh, they've got length and shorten lines on the pattern. And I just added, um, looks like an inch there to the length. And it's just, it's just right on me now. Apologies to anybody who doesn't like, <laughs> who's a bit squeamish about patterns being cut out. I am a cutter, I'm afraid. I kind of think life's too short. I do tend to keep all the extra bits as well. So um, more than one, more than once I've been, putting it back onto the cutting table and taping it back up again and cutting a different size. But I do tend to try and keep all the sizes, but um, I can't bear tracing. So I will just cut it out. And then if I need to, I'll stick it back together with sellotape. So that's just the way that I do it. Anyway, um, that's it for now. I will be back hopefully a little bit later to show you the finished, um, the finished sunny jacket. So in the meantime, take care. Thanks. Hello, it's me. I'm back with uh, my sunny and my fake buttons. Um, don't even ask. I've had a bit of a journey with this jacket. Um, some things just don't go smoothly, do they? Well, this has been one of those projects a little bit. Um, I'm really happy with the finished result. I absolutely love it. Um, it's lined in this beautiful Sherpa and um, it fits really nicely. I, I love the collar detail um i love the top stitching there's loads of things that i like about it and i will definitely make another one i'll probably make the plain one next time um if i made this one again i might add an inch it's it's the crop length but to me i think i could just do with that extra inch um around it feels a little bit short around the back um I am, um, yes, I have fake buttons because I've had an absolute nightmare with my buttonholes. Um, I have sewn, there's five buttonholes on this top and I've sewn each of them at least once. I've probably sewn eight buttonholes. Uh, every single one has gone wrong, so I've had to unpick them all. I have used um, my uh, Janome, my new machine, which is the Janome Atelier 7. I think there's some things maybe stuck in the machine or it just, uh, it keeps coming unthreaded and then it gets halfway through a buttonhole. It's just not a happy machine. I do, as I say, I think there's some thread or something stuck in it because it's been playing up a little bit. So that's going back off to the manufacturer's on Monday. So then I have dragged my old Janome, my faithful, I absolutely love it, my DC 3050 out of retirement and had a go with that one. And that's just not done, not played ball either. So maybe it's the fabric I have interfaced it and it's not a particularly thick fabric. It's just, it's a really well behaved cotton twill. So I honestly don't know what I've been doing wrong, but um, I'll put some pictures in. I think every single problem it's possible to have with buttonholes I have had over the last two days. So as I say, I've resorted to just sewing them on and um, I've got these some of these magnetic clips. Um, it's like a bag clasp. So I might just put a couple of those on just to keep it closed. I don't know because I really want to wear it tomorrow for the Chanel exhibition in London where I'm going down to meet my friend. I'm so excited and I just wanted, um, I thought, oh, this would be a nice little jacket to wear down there. So um, come hell or high water with fake buttons, I am going down and I'm going to be wearing it. So I'll put some pictures in of me in this. Um, in the meantime, I'll just say I did find um, some photos of the um, the Chanel, I think it's the resort um, collection from 2020 and they had a very similar fabric to this very same the same color very similar look in a sort of um I think it was like a almost like a jumpsuit so I have got plenty of this left so you never know then it might be coming out to be a jumpsuit or anything that doesn't have buttons on it because for some reason buttons and this fabric just don't seem to be going very well it could well be me though because as I say it hasn't been a straightforward project and that's um again it was kind of all my fault um 
I bought the lining, so I bought the paper pattern and you have to buy the lining separately, which um, to me is a bit of a shame. I know obviously it's probably got to be drafted separately or whatever, but I, I would always prefer to buy a lined jacket rather than having to, to buy it all in, in separate bits. Anyway, the, the lining was sent over by PDF, so I printed that out and um, cut it all out. Um, and because I'd not made a line jacket before, I took it to the sewing social just so I could get some advice because I couldn't find any instructions with it. Um, I looked through the instruction booklet and uh, there was nothing about lining, but I had read that Tilly had said they'd gone to quite a lot of trouble to, to create the lining instructions. So I, I just couldn't find them anywhere. So anyway, went along to the social explained the situation and said, I've never lined a jacket before. I have I have a jacket here, I have a lining, not quite sure what to do. Couldn't get my head around. Um, it's inside out, back to front, where do I pin it? And bless her, Adele came straight over. She's made two Heather blazers before. So she is, um, she's really good. She knows exactly what she's doing with linings. And she pinned it all together for me um, as like magic. Um, it all came together. I mean, she has one of those brains that can just understand what needs to be done inside out, back to front, upside down, whatever. She's, she just sorted it for me and, um, and, and put it together. And it was absolutely brilliant. So Beck was there looking for instructions. Donna came over to help pin it. Um, everybody just got involved. There's, there's just such lovely people in the sewing social. Um, but nobody could quite believe that Tilly would put out out a lining without any instructions. So I then went into my um, email just to say, right, I'm going to prove to you that she hasn't sent instructions. And of course, as soon as I opened it, the instructions were there. <laughs> I don't know how I'd missed them. Um, all the, the beautifully designed Tilly instructions. Um, so I, I don't know. Anyway, they were there. So that was brilliant. So once I'd left the um, the sewing social, I was able to follow the instructions and finish the rest of the jacket. Oh, that's the other thing um, that Adele did say. When she made the Heather Blazer, she found um, Chelsea's tutorial, which is on YouTube, invaluable of how to finish off the bottom um, in, inside um, lining. So I will re uh, really would recommend that you have a look at that if you're lining a jacket and you need a bit of help because there's no sew alongs yet for the sunny jacket, but the, the Heather Blazer one is, is really, really useful. So I looked at that a few times and managed to work it out at home and finish off the bottom. So talking of tutorials, um, I did say earlier that I'd give you a little bit of a tip of, um, of how I got the, um, the ruching done on a, on a slightly thicker fabric and it's to use this um, dental floss, which is Ah, it's just a genius idea. Some of you may have used it or may use it all the time, but I just think it's really, really good. It smells amazing as well. Um, and it's really, really tough. So it's not going to break. So the idea I'll, um, I'll show you in, in the footage is to um, put it on, on, just put it in the little groove on your presser foot. So, you know, it's in the middle and then you'll have to experiment a little bit about the size of the zigzag, but just zigzag over it because it's slidey you can then slide your fabric up and down um, and get your gathers as even um, as even as you like. These aren't as even as they should be, to be perfectly honest, but I'm not going to dwell on that. Um, they were good enough at the time and um, I think it's, it sort of, it works, it's fine. Um, but that's a really, really, really good tip. I do use it on skirts and things because I, I find often you can do your two, um, um, two, two lines of stitching, but sometimes the threads break or whatever. There's no way that this thread is going to break and you can just be so precise with your gathers. So that's a, that's a really good tip there. Um, so all in all, I am really, really happy with my jacket. Um, as I say, I would maybe lengthen it slightly. Um, I'm really looking forward to making the, the, the normal collar one as well. I might make I might make one of these in denim, maybe a longer one. I mean, there's all sorts of different options and you can put pockets on or leave the pockets off, as I say. Definitely, if you're thinking about going for it, if, if you're fairly new to jacket making as well, it is really, really straightforward in spite of what I've said. I think if you make sure that you find the instructions, that's always helpful. Um, and there are tutorials for the lining um, online as well from, um, from the, the Heather Blazer, which are really useful. So just give it a go. And it's just a bit of fun, isn't it really? I just, as I say, I kept it in a in a really quite a dark fabric because I just wanted it fairly minimal because the the, um, the collar speaks for itself, doesn't it? But it's given me, it's given me interest now in, in you know, a bit more frill. So I'm kind of thinking that I, 
frills might be the way forward for me i know i'm very late to the party but uh yeah but i think oh, i don't know i just I, I like this jacket i'm waffling now i'm gonna go and i'll see you soon take care bye